listening to, to PBN. Your path back to stability here. Imagine you were fighting a war, and you had no idea you were fighting it. Your nation was in full-scale warfare, and you had no clue. All you had was suspicions. You look at the last two hurricanes. My house, which is hilarious, my house is contemplating harp and talking about all the things that could have happened that may have happened and the lithium and the quartz and spruce pine you know forest garvin from prepper that grew up in sport spruce pine which is a, a weird place to ever have headlines a lot of quartz there a lot of precious a lot of precious <laughs> earth minerals I'm drinking some disaster coffee. You may want to do the same. Disastercoffee.com I'm drinking the black pumpkin right now because, you know, it's cold-ish. The pumpkins and the squashes are blooming in my garden and lining my steps. And that's just the time of year it is. But I've seen China put lasers on Hawaii. If you remember the blue lasers coming down near Hawaii some time ago, long before the Maui fire, we know that there are that, that there are some capabilities. I don't know what those lasers were. I don't know what they were capable of. I don't know the backstory on them, but I remember the footage very clearly. Strange lasers near Hawaii. You look it up, you'll see the video, you'll see the pictures. It's not a hoax. And now I think to myself, you know, would Harp spawn things like this? Why would Harp? Why? What's the motivation? If you're looking to kill lots of people, then, you know, you kind of failed. It's not to say that the the people lost. Um, you know, every every life is sacred if you're on our side of the fence. If you're on the other side of the fence, then it's all death all the time. From the cradle to grave, death. You know, how can we maximize death in our society? <laughs> That's sort of the Democrat way late. Did you see Obama come out? Obama came out and said, The brothers ain't voting for Kamala. The brothers ain't coming out for Kamala. I didn't say it, he said it. Look it up. Go to Twitter. I, re- I retweeted it on my Twitter. It was so amazing. It was so amazing that the Democrat... I love the, like, the Democrat racism. Like, it's just the... The purest form of racism there is, right? They assume that there's this mythological black vote, right? This black vote. We need to get the black vote. What the? What are you talking about? What do you mean the black vote? Is the black vote the most silly thing you've ever heard of in your whole life? Like Like there's a call around the nation that happens? Around this time of the year where all black people get on the phone at the same time. And they're like, hey, who are you voting for? Okay, good. We short up the black vote. Excellent. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most crazy, it, racist thing of all time. And then they like, get accusatory when they're not part of the uh, part of the assumed black vote, right? Oh, not enough brothers coming out voting for Kamala. What a dunce. What a doofus. Who's more of a doofus, that guy or the people who believe in that guy? <laughs> Right? That guy, or the people who look at him and go, yeah, he's out to help us. He just wants us to get what we deserve. You know what I mean? And then he flies back to his mansion at Martha's Vineyard and laughs the whole way. Writes another book. Nobody buys. Makes another shit movie. Sorry. A little distaste for that gentleman. But truly... Why are these hurricanes so big? Why are they doing so much damage? Of course it's climate change and it's your fault and you should be hung. 
and all of your electronics burned and, and all of the gasoline in the world uh, sh- shuttled off to Jupiter. But really, why are they so big and why are they going where they're going? How did that? How did Helene wind up in the mountains of North Carolina? That's a coincidence, right? That's supposed to be. We're supposed to chalk that up as a coincidence. Is the government going for the lithium, or are the mines were the mines shut down by an attack from China? Maybe none of it's true. Maybe none of it's true, and that's the volatile life on planet Earth. Or maybe it has nothing to do whatsoever with planet Earth. Maybe it has everything to do with the sun. You know, at the same time that we are lamenting climate change and blaming human beings for all the problems and and punishing them by aborting all their children or poisoning all their children, one or the other, um, we're also dealing with tremendous solar activity. I mean, we're in a solar storm right now as we speak. My phone could go dead right this second. You know what I mean? I mean, it's what we're in. We're in it. This morning, I wake up early as the sun's cresting the horizon of my neighborhood. Beautiful. You get like walk out to the street and look down, and there's sort of like a valley of trees, and the sun comes right up there. And I'm watching like the first rays of sun come up, and Carl B. sending me pictures that look like something from Alaska that happened in his backyard last night, right? The Aurora Borealis, pink, brilliant pink with stars above it. Dave Jones is sending me his purple sky from the top of his mountain in northern uh, Virginia. And I'm just, you know, all this is happening. It's weird that we can't equate massive... I'm not saying this is the cause. I'm just saying it's weird that we can't equate massive amounts of solar activity with a warming planet right we're in a solar maximum we're in a solar maximum that we don't understand it was supposed to end already we don't understand it it's not ending so the thing that heats the planet up not not your car i mean <laughs> the thing, not not the cows but the thing that actually heats the planet up is up there and it's at max power in its cycle and we're sitting here, and the planet's getting warmer, and we're going, Hey, you think it's the sun? Hell, no, definitely not. Certainly isn't the sun. Couldn't be that. <laughs> I'm not saying it is, all right? I'm not smart enough on these topics to tell you what is and what isn't. I'm merely saying the conclusions that we come up with are kind of hilarious. You know what I mean? Like, the conclusions that we come up with as people are really funny. But listening and, uh, and reading and talking about this subject of harp and, and weather modification, it does call into question, you know, if, if you were to fight a covert war. But then again, why would we fight a covert war while we're busy fighting two other wars? But anyhow, if you were to fight a covert war using economics, using viruses, using weather, uh, it would make sense in the age of Vietnam. I mean, following the age of Vietnam, when we realized, like, ooh, we can't put too much focus on warfare because that's a problem. And the people don't like that too much. There's no way we can go to war with China uh, to save our buddies Taiwan because there'll be too much backlash. We're already in too many wars. Or China, being who they are, saying, well, we've sent, you know... We've sent a veritable birthday bouquet of (laughs) spy balloons across the continent and they did nothing. (laughs) Maybe they were studying the jet stream. Maybe they were studying the jet stream in detail to figure out exactly how to seed these hurricanes that would become massive. And maybe we're only looking at the first wave of attack. Maybe we're looking at sort of like test models, right? These are test models. Because I'm telling you right now, you know, the de- devastation and destruction is akin to, well, everybody says apocalyptic, but d- I think Dave Jones hit it best. And he said it was it was worse than leaving Baghdad, right? So if you didn't want to send rockets, if you didn't want to send nuclear weapons, if you didn't want to send missiles, if you didn't want to send 
anything hard that you could look at and go, oh, man, you know, China is killing us. It's time to swell the ranks of the military and, and take action. Well, what you could most certainly do is figure out how the weather pad study the weather patterns with weather balloons and, and, and surveillance and instruments and beam all that data back by flying over your enemy's territory with many, many weather balloons in the high altitudes and figuring out exactly what, how it all works in detail with modern technology. And then figure out, OK, well, we have this hurricane season that hits America every year. What can we do? In the Atlantic, what can we do in the Gulf from satellite or, or underwater, right? What can we do? You know, a stealth submarine, who knows what a stealth submarine can do under the water to increase the temperature of the ocean. That's all you would have to do. All you, all you have to do is increase the temperature of the Gulf in order to get these hurricanes to go from zero to a thousand. What would a... a nuclear sub, a, a stealth nuclear sub have to do to do that? Or what would a, a fleet of them? There could be a fleet of stealth nuclear powered subs uh, in the Gulf and how would we know? How would we know? You know what I'm saying? And that's it. That's all you got to do. And then maybe you can guide them a little bit or maybe not or maybe you can or maybe you can't. Maybe you can affect the quartz industry and the lithium industries by destroying this little part of uh, northwestern North Carolina, right? Or I'm sorry, southwestern North Carolina. Maybe you can see how much damage one of these big storms can do to a major city by pushing a couple through Tampa. See what, see what you're capable of, you know? This is all conjecture. This is all conspiracy at the moment. <laughs> But I've been hearing a lot of talk about weather warfare and harp and so on and so forth. And, and you're just hearing the thoughts of one man trying to figure out the big question of our day, and that is the why. Like, I get that we're capable of things. I get that our enemies are capable of things. But why do it? If it isn't just Mother Nature, then why do it? Why? What's the, where's the why? It's a pretty easy bouncing ball to follow, right? If the communities never recover and they start mining for lithium in, in, <laughs> in North Carolina, then we'll be able to say, yeah, of course, it's exactly what they did. There's a lot of things, you know? There's a lot of things to consider here. Another big one to consider is, is what, um, what the hell? <laughs> But what's it all mean to you, PBN family? If someone can steer a hurricane and turn it into a Category 8 and steer it into your neighborhood, what's it mean to you? Hmm? You know, almost all problems of the day fall back onto preparedness and self-sufficiency. Community. That's where our strength is as people. Yes, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are important, and they need to be defended. But the reality is, <clears throat> our self-sufficiency, our communities, and our preparedness is uh, what happens when disaster and evil strikes. That's the reality, man. That's the truth of the matter. So, it's a, it's a large, grand-scale focus on that right now. You know, if you want to defend... The Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Step one is preparedness and self-sufficiency. No matter what kind of a patriot you are, no matter how patriotic you are, no matter how your historical moxie is and how deep it runs and what you know about the Battle of Poitiers. No, that's not right. <laughs> that's not America. Um, no matter what you know, right? No matter how many AR-15s you own, what kind of plate carrier you have, what kind of comm system you run, what kind of nods you wear. It all goes back. Your number one weapon, your number one tool to defend the Constitution, to defend the rights of, of 
the Bill of Rights, the rights of every American. It all goes back to self-sufficiency and preparedness. It all goes back to you being able to say something using your First Amendment right and be able to weather the storm, be able to do something, being able to, right? It all goes back to being able to stand on your own two feet. In order to defend that flag, you have to be able to sustain yourself. And that's why comfort and convenience has been such an amazing tool for eroding our rights. Oh, somebody bring me what I need. Oh, give me the, the, the business and the service and the, and, the, and, the, and the items and the markets that I need. Oh, someone, someone else do it for me. Someone else do it for me. What we didn't know about someone else do it for me is that that's the end. That's how you go back. That's the path back to serfdom, right? That's the route back to serfdom. That's how you wind up in a situation where, oh, you know what? Just vote Kamala and she's going to give us more stuff. Oh, I love it when they give us stuff. Give me more stuff. Make it easier. Why am I so miserable? If the government's been giving me free stuff and I'm having all my stuff delivered and everything in my life is manufactured for me, why am I still so miserable? Why do I need all this antidepressant um, medicine? Why do I have to take these pills every day if... Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have taken such good care of me and they're going to do so for another four years. Huh? Why? Well, what's, the, what's the issue? Why aren't I thrilled every day when I wake up? Oh no, look. There's four million eggs recalled. Oh, the FDA's recalling four million eggs. We better be careful. Go check. Go to your, run to your fridge and check your eggs. Run to your fridge and check your eggs even though it requires next to nothing just to have your own eggs. I can tell you one thing. The FDA uh, has no say over my egg production or consumption, right? And because I keep a small flock, I have almost no concern whatsoever about any kind of flu. <laughs> you know what I mean? They all die, we get new chickens. Pretty simple. These are things that we should own as people. They're the, the process of producing eggs... Six chickens in your backyard. It's a half dozen eggs a day. You'll never eat them all. Right? You'll never eat them all. I don't care what kind of family you have. Six chickens in the suburban backyard is twelve. Is six eggs a day. We'll say five eggs a day. Right? 35 eggs per week. You'll never eat them all. They'll be the best eggs you ever had. You'll never eat them all. You'll be giving them away to your neighbors. Right? You'll be hard boiling them, you'll be pickling them, you'll be liming them up. And we sit here like dunces and go, I think I'll just buy my half dozen or my dozen at the grocery store. Oh no, there's no eggs now. Oh, the price of eggs is $9 a dozen. Can you believe this shit, Sally? Can you believe it? And we sit here <laughs> like idiots trying to figure it all out. You know? It was figured all out. It was all figured out. We just ran. We just overshot the goal. We just overshot the goal, and our government's been taking advantage of it ever since. Our enemies have been taking advantage of it ever since. Let the Americans get fat and sloppy and lazy, and watch their rights erode. And then we'll take over once they get weak enough. Well, ours is a call to strength, PBN family. Ours is a call to strength. That's what it is. It's a call to strength and to honor and to the courage to do things that people don't like or people say are too hard or people say don't work or whatever the situation is. If you have not yet visit pbnfamily.com, become a member today. Become a member today. There's all kinds of info. It's all really geared towards self-sufficiency, self-reliance. From entrepreneurship to gardening to chicken raising to preparedness planning, the whole thing. PBNfamily.com is a website geared towards exactly what it is I've just spent the last 19 minutes talking about. Right? The conditions of the world and how we react to them. The conditions of the world and how we survive them, how we adapt to them. This is... It's... Not easy, don't get me wrong, but it's hardly impossible. It's hardly unstoppable. 
once you start to drill down on you and yours and you really start to see that oh we can we can affect this right that's the biggest problem right now people live through 2020 and they realize we can lose control of everything once you realize that you can gain control pretty easily over your own life and your own food production and eating and, and power and those kinds of things so, uh, security you know defense all that kind of stuff you, know, you just you just live a great life if you're out there listening and life is misery which it is for many people I just want you to understand you know it's <laughs> you're not that many steps away from a great life you're not that many steps keep listening share the shows and all that and uh Trust me, PBN fan. <laughs> because there's many of you out there listening who are already on that path and enjoying this life. If you want a weapon, if you want an action, if you want a goal, if you want a thing to change this world, it's self reliance and independence. It is your path back to stability. Visit pbnfamily.com. Become a member this weekend. Do yourself and everyone around you the favor. Okay? And support our great sponsors, huh? Pack Fresh USA. Pack Fresh USA, our newest sponsor. If you're gonna if you're gonna get into DIY food storage, freeze drying, dehydrating, preservation, the gardens are coming in right now. Man, you probably got piles of stuff. Get into preservation. Bucket up your own food storage. You don't got to buy food storage off of anybody. Packfreshusa.com. Check them out. And don't forget about Carl B. at noon. Okay? Carl B.'s back at 12. Don't miss it. We love ourselves some some uh, strange truth here at PBN. All right. Talk to you guys soon.